Welcome back to Street Bandito. In this episode of the Electric 240Z, we're going to be mounting the front batteries. Good job! <laughs> That as a wise old head once said, work smarter, not harder. Yeah. And they always do the opposite. Looks the same. Yep. It's the same. 96 cells? No, more than me. <laughs> oh, hope so. I've been doing research on these things for so long. I have a BMS, which I cannot use. I can use the plugs. I think somebody might have actually cracked this BMS, but... What's a BMS? battery management system. So as you use the voltage in your battery, each of these is a cell, right? And there's 96 cells in this whole pack. So whenever you're charging or discharging, you know, using the power on your battery pack, you wanna make sure that you're doing it evenly across all your cells. So each of these cells, I think is around like four volts. And you wanna basically drain the four volts to whatever voltage, like evenly across all the cells. You also want to make sure that they stay the same temperature and stuff like that. So that's what it does. Some of the like, some 12 volt batteries that cars run have a similar mounting system to this, where it's got a, t a foot on both sides. So you slide the pack into this foot, and then this foot over here bolts in. See all these bolts right here? So you slide it in, put this bracket on it, bolt it down. That holds it. So I can cut that bracket off of this main metal piece and use it. And I think I'll use the main metal piece in the center to uh, run in my transmission. All this BMS bullshit. <laughs> the theatrics. You might have watching a lot of anime, huh? <laughs> Okay, you would have seen in the very first episode that I cut and notched this section of the inner fender well. Um, that is obviously to hold the batteries. As you can see, I set one in here. They have a little bracket on the bottom that they mount to, which this is not sitting on, but you know, you get the idea. And these two longer batteries are kind of weird because they have a side inlet and outlet for the coolant, which is nice because then I don't have to have, you know, even more room to route some coolant lines out here. So these work perfectly up front and they should, these two together should weigh exactly, this is just one, should weigh exactly the same amount as the uh, rear Tesla drive unit. Um, slightly heavier, I think maybe by like 20 pounds, but with the radiators and stuff, we'll probably end up around the same weight, I'm hoping. I do have vehicle scales now, so we can uh, go ahead and weigh it as we're doing stuff, but my main thing I'm trying to focus on right now is I built this, I cut this new brace across here and I built these little shelves to hold the batteries. Um, but that was before we really dove into some of the design working with Ash and Carlos. And we have decided to do a huge vent in the hood that goes to nothing. So it'll take some of the turbulent air that's gonna be hitting the face of the vehicle and it'll just push it up over top of the car. Um, and it's kind of a cool design feature because it shows like there is no cooling up here. It's also not just a flat black block off plate. So, you know, it's a cool design feature. But the main issue we have is the height of the battery. So what I need to do is cut into the frame rails here and here and drop this battery down about five inches. So I have a bunch of steel angle and uh, We'll kind of just go step by step, but I'm gonna start by cutting this section out, cutting out all this work I already did. <laughs> and then uh, we'll figure out how to drop this down, keep it really secure. 
um, already measured uh, distance wise from the ground, it should be completely fine. But we're also gonna flip this around so these ports are not facing the top of the battery so I can get the battery scooched up as close to this battery as possible. So I got both batteries in here. I ended up uh, facing both uh, ports forward because this is actually gonna work out pretty well. And I can keep this battery box real tight, which is what this is. This is just a cut section from the Chevy Volt battery tray thing. So we're gonna use that as part of the plug. Starting the layup of the firewall. I just wanted to note real quick, I'm setting it up right now, like I've already set the gel coat and everything in this about a day ago. So it's a little tacky, but not too tacky. Like I can still rub it, it's fine, but it will hold the carbon in place for my first layup. I'm gonna do a wet layup, and then I'm gonna vacuum bag the whole thing. I got tape already ran around it. But what I wanted to note is fiberglass 3K with the stabilized weave is awesome for something like this especially something that's flat you want the i'm going to do a seam down the center and i'm going to make all of these edges really crisp and i don't want any like weird waves in it because it's going to be main the main section of the engine bay where, where you're going to see once you look into it so i'm just cutting out certain sections and laying them up one by one but this is so useful because you can see like this still will stay square and not distort the weave at all. Whereas if I cut a normal piece of carbon fiber, it would start fraying. And even if I cut it perfectly, it would have an edge. Or if I pull out pull out one of the strings, it'll have an edge that I'll have to cut, which will have little frayed marks and it'll be a slightly darker two channel on the edge. So this is super, super helpful when laying up something like this. I can really take my time and make sure all these edges are real crisp. But I'm gonna go ahead and just jump into time lapse and we'll get going. Okay, so it's been a little while since the last clip, but we've been figuring out a bunch of stuff at the same time. We didn't really have a good spot to continue and record here. So I was a bad YouTuber and didn't record any of this stuff, but we're just gonna go over it, so that's fine. So you saw Will and I got all the batteries set in place, but they were just on the racks that they came with from the Chevy Volt originally. Um, so what we did was we set them in, got them to the correct spot, 
Then we lifted them up and we threw some epoxy underneath them and then let that dry and then we slid the batteries and threw rivets through the battery bracket into the center floor section. So these brackets down here, this one's actually not even bolted in. So these little metal brackets slide in here. Let me see, I've only done this like a hundred times now. The other way. Nope, that was right. Slide in here like that. Get a bunch of these little nuts on there. And they keep it from sliding this way. And it's got a little, almost like a tongue and groove style on that side. So once these are clamped down, these batteries are going nowhere. There are two ways to run them when you're running multiple batteries, in series or in parallel. One doubles voltage, one doubles amperage. Um, we're doing both. So each Chevy Volt came with three batteries in series, um, which basically means you're running the negative, will be your most negative spot, right? And then you're running the positive from one battery to the negative of the next battery. So positive, negative, positive, negative, three chain of batteries, right? That's the regular Chevy Volt style in series. Um, and so that'll just keep doubling up, well, adding the voltage of one battery to the voltage of the next battery, but it'll keep the amperage the same. Um, it's not an exact uh, analogy, but I like to think of it as like, voltage is more like your horsepower and amperage is more like your fuel tank. Mm. So we wanna stay around 400 volts because that's what the Tesla motors are built for. And that's like your max power you're gonna get out of a Tesla large drive unit is 400 volts. So we don't wanna go over 400 volts because then that's just overkill and I'm not even sure if that will take it. I don't know, I'm kind of new to this. We're figuring it out as we're going. <laughs> but so we're gonna be around 400 volts, but uh, each Chevy pack of three batteries in series is about 400 volts. But so if I added the second three batteries, we'd be at 800 volts and only 16 kilowatt hours, um, which is the same, like it's like your amperage rating, I guess. Um, so instead we're running three batteries in series and then running two of those packs in parallel. So it's think of like battery, battery, three, three. And basically what you do is you're, you run all three in line and at the very end you double up the positive and at the very end you double up the negative. Mm. Um, which when you have batteries right next to each other, it seems really easy. But when we are doing something like this, it's a little more complicated. So you saw I took both small batteries combine them into one long beast of a battery. These cannot just, I can't just add this one to this one, which is why I have like a little bus bar, like uh, not a bus bar, the opposite of that. I have like a little rubber thing stopping any voltage from transferring between them. But I've gone ahead and I've made some nice cables. We got a nice little cable clampy guy, which we'll show you off of Amazon. It's like 40 bucks, it's really nice. Um, but we, I did uh, put a good bit of money into some nice flexible line. It's good for 600 volts, says right on it. So it's really flexible, like you can bend it, do tight corners with it, it's fine. Running that is so much nicer, and this is also overkill for the voltage I'm running. So like the stock uh, Chevy Volt cables were like half the size. So we're just being safe, making sure that it'll not overheat the cables or anything like that when we're doing some crazy pulls. I'm not sure how far we can push the motor with the AEM controller, the VCU 300 controlling it, but we'll see. But just to be safe, we went overboard on the cables. Dude, that mosquito is persistent. Yeah, dude, he's like flying around my head. It's really annoying. <laughs> Will's out there dying outside, <laughs> getting bit by mosquitoes. Yeah. Um, and then you can also see that I ran most of the vibrant hose, three quarter inch hose that uh, essentially connects all the plumbing lines of these guys which is another convoluted mess. <laughs> cool, it comes in this side right here, right? It runs through here, comes through this loop, goes through this side of this battery, comes across to over here, <laughs> loops back over to the other side of the same battery, comes back across over here, loops from that side of that battery all the way across over to here, comes out here to our Tesla auxiliary pump, it's essentially just an electric water pump. Bosch makes it, it's real quiet, and it's on a rubber isolator, so you can avoid noise or whatever. So it runs through here, through the pump, out to this battery, through all the cells of this battery back out here, 
down to this battery, out through all the cells in here, back around this way. <laughs> and then it runs to this guy, which is just cut right now. Um, this is gonna run to two ports. We have a nice firewall piece we made here. This will run to one of the vibrant, uh, we have a 12 AN uh, bulkhead fitting. And then it'll run through that to the AEM EV's uh, CCU, which is like the charging unit for the big batteries and your 12 volt battery. Then to a bleeder, like a coolant reservoir type thing, so we can bleed the coolant. It has to be at the highest point and the CCU is gonna point, be right here, so it's probably gonna sit right here be absolutely as high as we possibly can get it. And then back down to this guy, which is uh, the battery heater out of the Chevy Volt. You just run your 400 volts to these guys through your, through another uh, contactor, which is essentially like a huge relay. And then there's a little temperature sensor in here. So this heats up your batteries because you don't want your batteries to become, to be charging when they're too cold. So if you try to charge it at during winter time or something like that, it'll actually preheat the coolant to run through the batteries before it starts blasting them with voltage. So hmm. they don't wanna to be too hot, they don't wanna to be too cold, but they'll operate around 80 degrees and they'll be super happy. So we're not talking about huge pressures in any of this line or anything like that, but it's all vibrant um, heater core hose. So it's good stuff. Um, and also all vibrant fittings that are running through the bulkhead and stuff like that, so that's good. Um, other than that, what else have we done since last time I recorded stuff? Uh, I made this little uh, steering bracket guy. I had this is a stock 240Z steering column piece, and that would usually go to like a little rubber piece. I guess it would take some of the vibration out of the steering. I'm not sure, but uh -huh. Technotoy Tuning makes a aluminum puck that replaces that, which I was planning on running. But the depth of this U joint that I could find. It was a little too deep, so I just actually ran them straight to each other, which essentially does the same thing. Um, then I got a nice fitting here for the firewall. So it's just nice and tight, not all loosey-goosey in the firewall. And if you come around here, it's where the magic happens. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, this is a Chevy Equinox or Saturn View steering column, which is a powered steering column, similar to your Prius or some Corollas and stuff like that. A lot of newer cars have either powered racks or powered columns. But the nice thing about this is there's a, some dude on eBay that makes this little harness here. You already wired it in? Yeah, no, it's, it, there's flying leads off it right now, uh. but it is plugged in over here. Essentially all you do is you run power and ground through a connector right here, straight from your battery. And then you run switch power, ground, and then the, this yellow and this gray run off of this potentiometer. And you can mount this in your dash somewhere and you put Let a little nice, nice knob on it. So you just connect these leads to those leads. But I guess he leaves them disconnected in case you want to extend it or shorten it or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then this will let you dial in the amount of steering assist this motor gives you. The other thing you can do with this, you can run a speed sensor and then you can tell, you could get the readings that this thing gives and you could adjust the steering assist to how fast you're going. So if you're in a parking lot and you're, you want more steering assist and you're not really hauling ass, yeah. you could have it be full assist and make it really easy to park. And then when you're on the highway and you don't want any assist hardly, you could just completely turn it off, which is really nice. So we have this, which is a Tesla Model S brake booster, eye booster, also made by Bosch. And this is an electric booster. And someone's figured out that if you plug in these couple, it's literally four flying leads, it's very similar to the power steering. Ew. Power and ground, straight to battery. Ew, crazy. 12 volt constant, 12 volt constant, ground, and then this is your signal wire for your ignition. And then you got power brakes. You don't have to run any. If you got a turbo car, I was thinking about doing this on my other Datsun, but if you have a turbo car and you have problems with uh, your brake booster pressure and stuff like that, you could always switch to a electric booster. The only problem is like people aren't like, don't have that much information on these. So I'm not sure the exact size of the bore of this boy, but it looks pretty fat and stout. And the yeah. Tesla brakes are pretty huge. And the brake kit that we're putting on this from Technotoy Tuning is pretty huge. So that's. 
I feel like the cool thing about it, you could potentially do a lot of brake tuning, maybe in the future since it's electric. Yes, this doesn't have any control as to how much uh, pressure it gives you. Okay. This actually, it would run off a CAN bus system, but it goes into a fail safe mode where it just gives you good brake pressure all the time. So that's what this is gonna run off of. But uh, there are people in the forums that are basically doing that. They're trying to hack the CAN. You get a CAN module and have it you could read the can from a good working Tesla Model S, then you could probably alter it. But I'm not doing any of that. We're gonna plug it in and psh, What's call the it a day. What's you have right there? This is a gland nut. These things are hot tamales, dude. They're awesome. Yeah, I need to get me some of those. Yeah, so you can, I bought these off of Amazon. Super cheap. Got a whole box of them behind you. You drill a hole in your firewall, you could throw this fitting through. And then these guys clamp down. The beach having shape. like a rubber boot. Yeah. Yeah, you can see like how open that is right there. Uh-huh. As you crank it. Dang, it's like the jaws of life. Yeah. It's actually really it reminds me of the worms from Doom. Yeah, dude, it does look like that. Crazy. But yeah, I mean I bought this whole pack of multiple sizes for real cheap on Amazon, so good thing to have. Especially when you're passing stuff through a firewall. Yeah. You don't want to run a bunch of like terminated like firewall fittings. The only issue you run into is then if like this is smaller, the whole of this is smaller than your uh, your intended like uh, connector on the other side, then you run into a problem. But for things where it's only a couple wires and you got a really small connector, or you have multiple like this little pins you can connect, then it's not a problem at all. Also, I'm gonna be running my brake lines through these guys because they're nice and watertight. And yeah, same thing. I don't have, to have every time you buy a bulkhead fitting for a brake line, and then you have to have a line that's the perfect length to it, I'm running a uh, vibrant line throughout my whole thing for my brake lines, just like the other Z. Um, and yeah, it would start to get really pricey if you're doing like bulkhead, bulkhead, bulkhead. You want some little guys? You want some Mondo? I don't even know what you would put through here. Like dash 20 hose would fit through this guy. Or it gets real small, well not real small, but much smaller than it was. Like a really thick bulk of wire. Yeah. People that have been using gland nuts are like, yeah, you dummies, where you be doing? But yeah. yeah. I've been living under a rock. We've been living under a rock. We just found out about gland nuts, but. Oh, yeah, I just found out today. So the final bit of this episode, we saved the best for last. We have this gorgeous, uh, let me move this so I don't break this. Yeah, you do have a habit of dropping <laughs> stuff off the fender. True. We have this nice, firewall we've made. I think I talked about this, but we didn't really show much of it, I don't think. Nah, it's um, actually really clean. Yeah, dude. As he just scrapes it on the floor. Yeah, it's fine, the underside will never be seen. Um, so, we literally made a MDF template of this whole thing, and I knew kind of around about where the batteries were gonna be, so I just bumped it up and made it a little bit longer than it needed to be, a little higher than it needed to be. Um, but you can see it's offset to one side, This is actually at the center line of the car, but it's longer on this side than it is on this side. That's so that can bump around the steering, and this can bump around so we can run the lines right up here to the charging unit. But uh, all this carbon, this is not like a V-weave carbon we bought. This is just fiberglass, uh, I keep, I wish for blank on the word, stabilized 3K carbon. Mm. So it has the little backing piece. And so all I did was just cut a straight line on it with a ruler and just set it in the mold and just hand place each of these pieces. Like that's a separate piece, that's a separate piece, this top section's a piece, that's another piece from it. So I just kind of lined them all up and I had a laser level shooting the level straight down the center for me and it came out great. I did have a big issue with the, the first time I cleared it, I used this matte clear, but I think I used too much hardener in the matte clear and it, did some crazy stuff with the uh, the gel coat that I had on here. Yeah. And didn't like it, so I had to scrape it all off with a razor blade. So I scraped a bunch of like little nicks in it, which is really annoying. There's a big nick up there. And then like we had some pinhole issues. It was literally perfect before, and then I cleared it and it had some issues. But we're feeling the crunch of SEMA. We gotta kind of just roll on. But it looks 90% there. It's really good. So that's higher than what I do for YouTube. Yeah, videos. yeah. But so I give 80%. <laughs> I'll go ahead and set this in there so you can kind of get a good idea. Like the firewall looks absolutely messy, but 
probably everybody's looking at it like, that's going to SEMA, what the hell? And then you like, you throw this in, like, damn, that's a show car now. Yeah, yeah. Show Hide car. all your imperfections. Yeah, in exactly. What are you talking about? We didn't have any, any issues here. There's a little bump. In a way, this is how we treat the problems to our life. Hide them. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Throw stuff on top. No, so uh, the nice thing is I have like some holes over there for the brake booster that that will, uh, we, I had to actually cut this. I made it a whole huge panel and we cut it down to fit, but it wouldn't fit perfectly without having to cut these in separate pieces. So this actually is gonna go in here. But, you know, you get the idea. But having the, having bolts I can hold here and then the AMCCU, I'll hold it over there just for fun. Drop in fittings. This bad boy's gonna sit right here. So everywhere I have a, I'll have a hole in here, I'll be able to run bolts and stuff like that. And I'm thinking I might uh, even just get a big flat piece of wood and from the backside, wherever I have holes, just run some screws to really get it sucked mm. in there when we bond it. So this will be bonded in permanently. I just have to uh, do some welding for the tops of these gorgeous techno uh, top mounts for the uh, struts and stuff like that. And then a little body work and steal it the rest of the engine bay and then bond it in and finish some small stuff down there. But. I can show you these boys. Nice vibrant fittings. These are the two that are gonna run just like that. Run a hose lower and like down down below and above, right through here, right to the two coolant ports of the CCU. Well, one to the coolant port and then we'll have a little reservoir like I was talking about. Pop off your, your death oh, service yeah. hole. <laughs> Damn. Service hole. Oh, we can see the junk again. Hell yeah, it doesn't look too bad. It don't. Yeah, that way I can get to the steering column, I can get to the batteries if I need to. So all the BMS units for the center are all gonna sit on top of the stuff, um, on top of the batteries. Dude, this mosquito. I know, he wants his show time. Um, and then the BMS units for the this side are gonna sit against the fire while we cover this battery and stuff like that. These aren't gonna be open either. They'll have a nice carbon battery tray, but that'll also be part of the so you'll actually have a decent Hole. amount of space to throw some luggage in here. Yeah, this will, I mean, other than the CCU and the brake uh, booster right there, this is all gonna be a frunk. So, got tons of space. The trunk is still usable. It's got like more storage space than a stock Z by a lot. Damn. Um, I'm just hoping we can get it to around the same weight of a stock, 280 maybe. Um, I would love to be lower than that, but we have some vehicle scales now so we can weigh them. Um, and we have my wife's 280 over there to compare, even though it's missing the big bumpers and stuff like that. Maybe we'll find a subscriber that's got a completely unmolested 280 with the big bumpers and we'll really do a way off once we're done. But <laughs> One day it'll see the road. Yeah. If we can have a car that's got power steering, very fun to drive, looks absolutely ridiculous yeah. in a good way, uh, has a ton of storage, has AC, has all the modern amenities of stuff you'd want, like power brakes, but it looks, it's an old 70s car that's, you know, brought up to the future. And it looks like it's from the year stuff. 2050. Yeah. You know, like the old 90 movies. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. man, 2050, it'd be so far away. Yeah, what did, uh, what was that? That's, I don't even remember what that style's called. I keep trying to think of the name. Oh, real quick, I do want to talk about how I did this. Um, so I essentially made the whole firewall and then I straight up stole this idea from Mike Patey. If you don't know who Mike Patey is, but get where back have to you, work. you've been under, living under a rock, because he's, yeah, exactly. He's a man. Um, he hand builds uh, carbon cubs, which are just small airplanes, but he like completely makes them out of carbon and a whole bunch of stuff. He's had multiple planes, he's had multiple plane crashes, and still he keeps doing it. It's awesome seeing him do this. But uh, essentially what you do is you, You'll cut through, cut this entire square out, except for four little spots to leave tabs, right? So you cut 90% of the way there, you completely cut the corner, and you leave a little tab connected at each corner. So you cut through, and then from the back, you tape off your hatch, and then you wax where your tape is and everything from the back, and then you just 
lay strips of carbon from the backside. And so what that does is it makes a perfect shelf out of carbon. And then when you are finished, once that like the little uh, shelf hardens, um, then you can come here and just cut your little tabs, four tabs, tap it, tap it with a hammer from the back, whole thing pops off and you have a nice, I mean, I probably even should trim this back a little bit, but you can see like even like the lines of tape I had on here. So trim this back a little bit and call it a day, but you have a nice shelf that's at a perfect height. I even stacked extra tape up there so I could put a little, a thin gasket in here. Then I'll probably just drill maybe six holes in it total and run rib nuts. So we can access it when we need to. I keep thinking about like needing to put like something to pull it with, like a little pull strap, but I don't like the look of it and I can, as long as I have a little bit of a fingernail, I can pry it up. Get your pimp nails growing. Yeah, exactly. So we'll, we'll just leave it without it. It looks cooler without any tab or anything on it. So hopefully I can get some black hardware for that. Hit up Amazon again. We'll have like, you know, Elon Musk's uh, motor and then sponsored by Amazon for all these fittings and stuff I keep buying. Yeah, I can't believe they're fighting. That's crazy. Either was, way. I thought he was fighting Zuckerberg. Oh, right. They're not fighting. Yeah, that's true. Lizard boy. Lizard boy. Whatever. I don't know. I don't keep up on this stuff, clearly. I, mean, I don't have Twitter. You bought this on Facebook Marketplace, so we can true. still live up Whatever. to that, yeah. that beef. But yeah, so this is the saga of our $500 car going to SEMA. Um, yeah, we'll just keep pushing on it. Next episode, I don't even know what we're doing, but it's going to be cool.